Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video talking about some of the books that come out next year that I'm really really excited for and all the books I'm mentioning in this video are sapphic as far as I'm aware and yes I'm incredibly excited and there are so many sapphic ones that I've actually got another video planned because I just kept finding more and getting more excited so I think I've got about 15 books in this video so there's something for everyone. I've got so many different genres. I think I've got different age ranges and I'm just very excited. So now that that's done, I'm just going to actually start in the video a bit. Obviously, I can't talk about these books too well because there's not an awful lot of information about them. So I will be reading whatever synopses or the deal announcement or whatever. And I'm also going to be picking up bits that I found that the authors have said to describe them, just a few different ways of describing so you can get a more general vibe of the book. And a lot of these books don't have covers, but the ones that do, you're not ready. They're so good. And I actually did a thread on Twitter ages ago that kind of blew up a bit about some of the covers that were being announced for sapphic books next year. And I tweeted way back then, look out for this thread in video form. Finally it's here. <laughs> oh and my friend Ness has already done this video actually, though I've tried to pick very different books to her, though there's some that overlap because I just want to talk about what I'm most excited about, but I'll leave her video down below uh, if you want to see someone else being excited about next year's sapphic books and get some slightly different recommendations. So the first book is one I found out about on Twitter recently and it's called A Beautiful Doom by Laura Pohl. And Oh, I should have gotten something to read from, so I'm going to read from a laptop. <laughs> According to the deal announcement, this is the story of four troubled friends, one murdered girl, and a dark fate that may leave them all doomed. While investigating the murder of their best friend, four reimagined fairy tale heroines must uncover connections to their ancient curses and attempt to forge their own paths before it's too late. And as if that's not enough, the author's Twitter says it has. A boarding school that's a castle, FF pairings, an ace arrow protagonist, sword lesbians, and more fairy tale retellings than I can count. So basically, <laughs> I'm very, very excited. It's just got so many things I love sapphics, boarding school, murder mystery, fairy tale retellings. Ah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to read this one. So, this book's supposed to be coming out in July and I'm beyond excited. I cannot wait to be able to read it. The next book I want to talk about is a fantasy book to start of a series and it's called The Unbroken and it's by C.L. Clark. And I'm just gonna get my laptop to read the description. In a political fantasy unlike any other, debut author C.L. Clark spins an epic tale of rebellion, espionage and military might in the far outreaches of a crumbling desert empire. To reign as a soldier, stolen as a child and raised to kill and die for the empire, her only loyalty is to her fellow conscripts. But now her company has been sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion, and the ties of blood may be stronger than she thought. Luca needs a turncoat, someone desperate enough to tiptoe the bayonet's edge between treason and orders. Someone who can sway the rebels toward peace while Luca focuses on what really matters, getting her uncle off the throne. Through assassinations and massacres in bedrooms and war rooms, Turin and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation but some things aren't for sale. So that's the official synopsis, at least so far. I never know when these are going to change. And it sounds very, very good. I've not been a massive fantasy fan for a while, but that sounds very, very good. And to make it even better. So from these are things I've picked up from Twitter and such. So it's North Africa inspired. The author says it's gay, real gay. And the author calls it in uh, their Twitter bio, Terrain's Arms, and you can see in the cover, this was some good arms. There's a quote from an article including an excerpt, an excerpt of the book. The destinies of two women, one a soldier, the other a princess, become intertwined. And you've got politics and assassinations and fun stuff like that, but really, the destinies of two women becoming intertwined in a real gay book? I am living. <laughs> so this is one I'm very excited to check out. Next year when it comes out on the 23rd of March, 
I think most of these are quite early on releases. I don't know when the announcements are for later releases. But I'm very, very, very excited. The next book I want to talk about is one I'm also incredibly excited about, and that is The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. It's only got a little teeny weeny synopsis, so I'll read that. A debut supernatural thriller about two girls who fall in love when they team up to stop an evil demonic presence from terrorising their small town. <sighs> what more could I want? The author's Twitter has it as gay girl ghost hunters, an isolated small town and a darkness that lingers in the shadows. And they've also said why thriller about terrible lesbian detectives? And the daughter of TV ghost hunters moves to a small town where a dark entity wrecks havoc and must reluctantly help the town golden girls save the day. <sighs> this is just serving me so many things I want. It's basically what I gather from all of this is it's a kind of YA thrillery ho horror book with ghost hunting and lesbians, enemies to lover romance and... Ah! <laughs> I can't wait. It's I'm so excited. I just this video's like it's it's a fun idea to film and I'm very excited to hype these books up, but also it's just making me realize how long I have to wait for all these books I'm so excited for. So that one's not got a publication date as far as I can find, but all I've heard so far is just summer. The next one is one that appeared in my Twitter thread because it's got a gorgeous cover which I'll put up. That is She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quindlin. So this is the author of Late to the Party and Her Name in the Sky. And these are both books I really, really want to read. I can't believe I've not read yet, but they're very, very well loved. So I can't wait to pick them up. So this has got a proper synopsis that I'll read out. High school nemeses fall in love in this queer YA rom-com perfect for fans of Becky Albertalli and Casey McKiston. After losing spectacularly to her ex-girlfriend in their first game since their breakup, Scotty gets into a fender bender with the worst possible person, her nemesis, the incredibly beautiful and incredibly mean Irene Abraham. Things only get worse when their nosy, do-gooder mums get involved and the girls are forced to carpool together until Irene's car gets out of the shop. Their bumpy start only gets bumpier the more time they spend together, but when an opportunity presents itself for Scotty to get back at her toxic ex, and climbs school social ladder at the same time, she bribes Irene into playing along. The jinx, heartbreak and gay fic dating scheme for the ages. <sighs> so yeah, basically, I'm ready. So, to put that in short, sapphic, sports gaze, fake dating, rom-com, enemies to lovers, all the good stuff. Can't wait. <laughs> just gonna go look at that cover and just that's me happy. So that one comes out on the 10th of April. And next up is another one with a gorgeous cover that I tweeted about earlier, and that is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. And it's also got a lovely synopsis, so I will read it to you. In this charming debut fantasy, perfect for fans of Sorcery of Thorns and Girls on Paper and Fire. A witch cursed to never love meets a girl hiding her own dangerous magic, and the two strike a dangerous bargain to save their queendom. Like, do you need more than that? Do you? <laughs> but just in case you need a bit more con convincing. Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled by the ruling coven and cursed with the inability to love. The only way she can get those feelings back, even just for a little while, is to steal love from others. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic despite being unable to use it herself. Sources are required to train with a coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Ren, the only caretaker to her ailing father, has spent her life hiding her secret. When a magical plague ravages the queendom, Ren's father falls victim. To save him, Ren proposes a bargain. If Tamsin will help her catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. Of course, love bargains are a tricky thing, and these two have a long, perilous journey ahead of them. That is, if they don't kill each other first. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. So, sapphic witchy book. Two things I love. I adore witchy books. That kind of magic. Love it. Add sapphics. 
Perfect. What more could I want? I found a tweet from someone who had read an early copy of it who called it Tender slow burn hate to love FF romance with a whimsical world and my favourite grumpy witch daughter Tamsin. And that got me so excited. And then the author saying it's idiots to lovers and a sunshine grump pairing, which is my favourite. <laughs> oh, I'm so beyond excited for it. Just look at the cover. Look at this. It just sounds so good. And I cannot wait to have this in my hands. It comes out on the 9th of March next year. The next book I want to talk about is The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. This book doesn't have a synopsis yet on Goodreads, like it is blank, but the author's Twitter does. So I'll see what I can tell you about that. A lesbian vampire is hired to recruit a human girl with the power to see the death of anyone she touches. Murder and romance ensues. And they also team up to stop a killer. So like, fab, we're getting lesbian vampires. <laughs> so basically, right now everyone's freaking out about Midnight Sun because it's coming out as I'm filming this, I think very very soon. I've not paid attention because I don't really care. But meanwhile, <laughs> freaking about my lesbian vampires. Uh, Isabel Sterling is the author of These Witches Don't Burn, which is a book I really want to read and I own but I've not gotten to yet. But I am so excited. I cannot wait. I just... Ah. So this is meant to be coming out in autumn next year. Next up we've got She's Too Pretty to Burn by Wendy Hurd. Another gorgeous cover. Honestly, my bookshelves are going to be thriving next year with all of these covers. Whew. But I shall read you the synopsis. An electric romance set against a rebel art scene sparks lethal danger for two girls in this expertly plotted YA thriller. The summer is winding down in San Diego. Veronica is bored, caustically charismatic and unimpressed in her photography. Nico is insatiable, subversive, and obsessed with chaotic performance art. Their art is first, best friend second. But that was before Mick. Delicate, lonely, magnetic Mick. The perfect subject and Veronica's dream girl. The days are long and hot, full of adventure, and soon they are falling in love. Falling so hard they never imagine what comes next. One fire, two murders, three drowning bodies, one suspect, one stalker. This is a summer they won't survive. Inspired by The Picture of Dorian Gray, this sexy psychological thriller explores the intersections of love, art, danger and power. Holy moly, I'm so excited! Uh, so, that final wee line that inspired by Dorian Gray, that had me sold, but the whole synopsis... Whew, I just... <sighs> This book's gonna kill me. <laughs> but I'm loving this trend of kind of gothic, of thrillers, of horrors that are all sapphic. It has become a, a thing, like there's a lot of them and they all sound incredible so like I'm living for it. So this book comes out on the 30th of March. March sounds like a busy time. <laughs> the next book we've got has also got a gorgeous cover. It's not illustrated like the others but I also really like this one and this is These Feathered Flames by Alexandra Overy. So the synopsis is Three Dark Crowns meets Wicked Saints in this queer own voices retelling of The Firebird, a Russian folktale by debut author Alexandra Overy. When twin heirs are born in Turin, their fates are decided at a young age. While Zaveta remained at court to learn the skills she'd need as future queen, Asia was taken away to train with her aunt the mysterious firebird who ensured magic remained balanced in the realm. But before Asia's training is completed, the ancient power blooms inside her, which can only mean one thing. The queen is dead and a new ruler must be crowned. As the princesses come to understand everything their roles entail, they'll discover who they can trust, who they can love, and who killed their mother. So, that sounds very very good, right? Just a good wife fantasy inspired by a Russian folktale. Love it, love it. 
but wait. <laughs> so, from the author's Twitter, this book has FF enemies to lovers, a cinnamon roll monster, a devious princess, a snarky soft boy scholar, and bears you can ride. That's like a good list. <laughs> That's a very good list. I'm so excited to get my hands on this book and just eat it all up. This has got me excited for fantasy, these upcoming releases. When I, recently I've been a bit ugh about it, but these, oh, I need them. <laughs> so that book comes out on the 20th of April next year. So next up we've got A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. This is another fantasy with another gorgeous cover and I am so ready. I'm just gonna be reviving the fairy genre, you know? Like, forget Sarah J Maas, forget Holly Black. We've now got this. Choose your player. The ironborn half fate outcast of her royal fae family or a tempestuous fury exiled to earth from the immortal realm and hell-bent on revenge. A dutiful fae prince determined to earn his place on the throne. The prince's brooding guardian, burdened with a terrible secret. For centuries, the eight courts of folk have lived among us, concealed by magic and bound by law to do no harm to humans. This arrangement has long kept peace in the courts, until a series of gruesome and ritualistic murders rocks the city of Toronto and threatens to expose fairies to the human world. Four queer teens, each who hold a key piece of the truth behind these murders, must form a tenuous alliance in their effort to track down the mysterious killer behind these crimes. If they fail, they risk the destruction of fairy and human worlds alike. If that's not bad enough, there's a war brewing between the mortal and immortal realms, but one of these teens is destined to tip the scales. The only question is, which way? That has me sold. That has me ready to be a big fan of fairy again. Like, we're going back into Sarah J Maas fairy phase, but better. <laughs> so, from the author's Twitter, some other things we can note about this book. A sword lesbian, queer disasters, teaming up to solve a murder. Truly everything I could ever want. <sighs> Honestly, I'm just really hoping for some found family vibes because that is all I want, but with queer characters, it's just next level. There's something else. And yes, I am incredibly excited for this book. I've said that about all of these, but it's very much true and there's more. So that one comes out on the 2nd of March. The next book is one I've been anticipating for a good while. And that is One Last Stop by Casey McKiston. So that is the author of Red, White and Royal Blue. And they've got a sapphic wrong call me kind of book coming out next year. No idea when, but at some point. <sighs> so it's a queer spin on Kate and Leopold, but I don't know anything about that, but make of that what you will. Basically, I don't know much about it. There's not a full synopsis or anything like that yet, but I do know that it is kind of about the idea of a subway crush and there's time travel because it turns out the, cr the girl's crush is displaced from the 1970s somehow. And I just... Yes, please. <laughs> so I know like nothing about it, but I trust Casey. So <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to this and hoping it's going to be really, really good. And yeah, I'm just ready. If it gives me anything near the joy that Red, White and Royal Blue gave me, then I'm going to love it. The next book we've got is another gorgeous cover, and that is After Love by Tanya Byrne. So the like top tagline of the synopsis of this is the lesbian love story you've been dying to read. And I mean, that sold me. <laughs> That's all I need, really, to sell me on a book. But add the whole synopsis onto that, the cover onto that, and oh, I cannot wait to read this. Also, just look at them. They're kissing on the cover. Two girls. I can't believe it. Anyway. Ash Persaud is about to become a reaper in the afterlife, but she is determined to see her first love, Poppy Morgan, again. The only thing that separates them is death. 
car headlights. The last thing Ash hears is the snap of breaking glass as a windscreen hits her and breaks into a million pieces like stars. But she made it. She's still here. Or is she? This New Year's Eve, Ash gets an RSVP from the afterlife she can't decline. To join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate. But Ash can't forget her first love Poppy, and she will do anything to see her again, even if it means they only get a few more days together, dead or alive. Not even death can tear them apart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, just, just yes. <laughs> I, I have nothing more to say, other than I'm very upset I got declined for an arc. But, <laughs> I cannot wait. This sounds so good. And I just, I can't wait to have it. I can't wait to have all of these books. So like, if anyone wants to hit me up with an arc, I wouldn't object. So this one comes out on the 10th of June. So it could be a nice wee Pride Month read to look forward to. The next book we've got is another gorgeous cover. That is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. So Melinda Lowe wrote a book called Ash years ago and it's kind of become a bit of a staple in a lesbian books because it's one of the first that so many people read. I've not personally read it but at some point I will. <laughs> Acclaimed author of Ash, Melinda Lowe returns with her most personal and ambitious novel yet. A gripping story of love and duty set in San Francisco's Chinatown during the Red Scare. That book, oh this isn't speech this first bit. That book, it was about two women and they fell in love with each other. And then Lily asked the question that had taken root in her, that was even now unfurling its leaves and demanding to be shown in the sun. Have you ever heard of such a thing? That's got me excited. Then the actual synopsis. 17-year-old Lily who can't remember exactly when the question took root, but the answer was in full bloom the moment she and Kathleen Miller walked under the flashing neon sign of a lesbian bar called the Telegraph Club. America in 1954 is not a safe place to two girls to fall in love, especially not in Chinatown. Red Scare paranoia threatens everyone, including Chinese Americans like Lily. With deportation looming over her father, despite his hard-won citizenship, Lily and Kath risk everything to let their love see the light of day. So I kind of adore historical fiction and I particularly love queer historical fiction and a lot of that is set kind of the late 20th century and that's just a sweet spot for me in books and this is just, yes, it's like, so basically I'm very very excited. So this book comes out at the start of the year on January the 19th. Next up is a book I'm beyond excited for and that is The Drowning Summer by Christine Lynn Herman. So Christine wrote The Devouring Grey duology and they're so good and from the synopsis of The Drowning Summer I just know it's going to be good because it sounds like it's really going to play to the strengths of, de of The Devouring Grey and then do even more. So the bit of the synopsis they have a deal announcement so the YA contemporary fantasy with shades of The Great Gatsby follows two Long Island teenagers and fledgling mediums as they investigate a murder that rocked their small town six years earlier when three teenagers were found drowned with sand dollars laid over their eyes. So Gatsby vibes, murder mystery. Sounds good, sounds good. And as a bonus, both characters are bi and they're both girls and they fall in love. And what more could you ever want? So, basically, I will just be passing away in excitement for this book. We've really got a Gatsby Vibes and a Dorian Gray Vibes book, and that's the two books I sort of enjoyed that I studied in school, so I have been blessed. So I can't find a release date for that one, but sometime next year We'll find out about it and I'm sure there'll be cover announcements and stuff and I'll be retweeting them and like freaking out about them over on Twitter so if you want to follow me down there I'm often retweeting stuff like this. <laughs> the next book I found is It Goes Like This by Neil Moreland and listen just listen. So 
So this book is about a former queer pop band, the fallout of their globally mourned breakup, and the hometown storm that brings the teens back together, leaving them to wonder if they can rebuild more than just the town. So, queer pop band, the drama of them falling out and rebuilding it and all these tense relationships. But then we add, this is from probably the author's Twitter as well, sapphic, childhood sweethearts to enemies to question mark. And there's also bed sharing. And then drama. And um, basically, I'm very, very excited about this. I just, oh, team dynamics and like band dynamics, that's something else. And it's a new way of found family, but this is after they've been hurt and broken up and that's that's like sad found family and that's that's gonna be fantastic to read about. I'm very 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 excited about this. It's giving me Daisy Jones and the Six Vibes just with that kind of dealing with the rise to fame and the fallout of the band but obviously it's not quite and it's queer as Daisy Jones. Imagine if Daisy Jones was queer. Whew. The power that would hold. But anyway I've not got a release date for this book either, just that it's next year. They're really unprecise about when books come out. It's such a pain. But anyway, we've got one more. And this is one that I found out about by complete accident. And just the elation that I felt reading the synopsis. Oh, I'm not ready for this. So this book is called Of Trust and Heart and it's by Charlotte Ann Hamilton. And it's little teeny weeny synopsis is an own voices FF 1920s historical new adult novel in which a Scottish heiress who must find a husband soon falls for a singer at a speakeasy. <laughs> and the deal announcement confirms that this heiress, she's a lesbian, so Scottish lesbian frights me and her. <laughs> Though unfortunately I'm not in the 1920s finding a lover at the speakeasy, but I wish I was. Also new adult. This has got me excited because the author's actually Scottish. It's a Scottish romance, a Scottish historical romance written by a Scot, not by those weird American authors. Sorry, Americans. No. So yeah, you remember that thing about 20th century historical fiction, make it queer, really gets me. 1920s is also included in that. We can just say the whole century, but I've not really read any war stuff and I kind of want to miss that out for now. I've not got a release date for that one either but you can bet I will be talking about it when it comes out and counting down the days I am so 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 excited um, I hope you find some new books that might be that you might be interested in and let me know if you're interested in a part two because I've got enough books to do this again <laughs> and like I bet most of them haven't even been announced yet so let me know and I really want to do it so I might do it anyway but it'd make me feel better if other people wanted it. <laughs> but yes thank you so much for watching and I hope you're as excited about these books as I am and we can all just freak out together when they arrive. And yeah thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video soon!